Hello, everybody. This is Flea Market Fantasy number eight. I am your co-host, Michael, and as always, I'm joined by... Michael Dell of the LCS Hockey Radio Show. Yes, and since we are in October, or as I like to call it, Shocktober, we're doing <laughs> a little Halloween-themed uh, comic book here, sort of. Uh, we're going to review Ghost Rider number 77 by... J.M. Unpronounceable and Bob Budiansky. <laughs> I believe it's pronounced J.M. DeMatteis. DeMatteis. There you go. I should know that. Yes. Good writer. Um, yeah, so um, I am a fan of Ghost Rider. I'm a fan of the writer and the artist, and so this was my suggestion, but um, you can take it from here, Mike Dell. Yeah, I was, uh, I mean, I like Ghost Rider. I think he's, okay. uh, he's a good look, especially the newer ones. Sure. Uh, th- this is old school Ghost Rider. This is early Ghost Rider. So right. he's pretty much just riding a normal motorcycle. Like Yes, he's like a stunt driver, right? Yeah, and, and like the old, newer versions of Ghost Rider, like the, the cycle would have like flaming wheels and everything. Right. Back, back here, yeah, you know, just, a, just a motorcycle. Well, so. it's funny because I think because I, I, you know, when I was a little kid, uh, the, the second, well, the fourth Ghost Rider, uh, Danny Ketch came out and... He had the penance, or is it penance or penance? Penance stare? Is that penance. what it's called? Penance. penance. The penance. Yes. penance. Penache. The penache <laughs> stare. Okay. The penance stare. And he had the cool bike, and he had the spikes on his shoulders yep. and the black leather. And chains. And kind of, yeah, and he, the chains, the chains. Yeah. And I kind of projected that back onto Johnny Blaze. And then when I went back and read the comics, I was like, what the heck? I, I completely <laughs> forgot. He just had this, like, skin-tight, like, stunt bike uh, outfit, Right. Yep, and uh, apparently when they, well, we'll get into his creation here in a second, but uh, apparently the jumpsuit was inspired by Elvis. Yes, that's right. The (laughs) comeback special, Elvis, right? You got it. Yeah, and he has the flaming skull, but that's basically it as far as the Ghost Rider. True. But yeah, with the chains and the the flaming wheels on his bike, that's a good look, you know? It's a great look. He can whip those chains at people and wraps them Mm -hmm. up in the chains. That's good stuff. Right. All right, so, so Mike, oh, yeah, you said Ghost Rider 77, 1983. This issue is called Ghost Rider Unleashed? Question <laughs> mark. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a strange. It's probably the worst, not the worst, but in a way it's a, the best. In a way it's the worst place to start because it sort of revises or reveals more about his origin than we never knew. Yeah. But if you didn't know anything about Ghost Rider to begin with, it's kind of not a big deal, right? And it kind of retconned some of his uh, origin. They changed absolutely. The, they changed the big detail, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, let's get into this here. I don't. I didn't know much about the Ghost Rider. <clears throat> okay. Like I, I just uh, remember the '90s reboot there with Danny Ketch a little bit, but I never sure. really read a lot, and I never read any original Ghost Rider. So this is my first experience with original Ghost Rider. Really? Yeah. Okay. And of course, Michael, there was a another Ghost Rider. That didn't have anything to do with demons, but it had to do with, like, horses and guns. You right. That guy? Yes. Uh, N- Slade Carter? Carter Slade. Carter Slade, you just of had course. him mixed up a little bit. Yeah. But okay. uh, he, he was a Western character in uh, 1967. Yes. And the title was Ghost Rider. Right. And then when they came out with this Ghost Rider, the superhero guy, they said, all right, let's go back. And they, they started calling him the Phantom Rider. First, they called him Knight Rider. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, and then they're like, oh, crap, that's another name for a Ku Klux Klan member, so we can't use that. So oh, they, all right. then they changed it to Phantom Rider, yeah. Yeah, because the Ghost Rider, his outfit is all white. Yes. So, yeah, <laughs> that would have been... Right. That would have been trouble. All right, so uh, the first appearance of Johnny Blaze in Ghost Rider was Marvel Spotlight number 5, 1972. Right. And he had a run on there for about, I think, seven or eight issues, and then they decided to give him his own book. Yes. But uh, he was created by Roy Thomas, who we seem to mention at least once a week. I know. It involved. seems like it, especially this era, for sure. Uh, the artist Gary Friedrich, I believe. Or yes. I, and then, or is he a writer? I, I don't know. And then, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Gary Friedrich's the writer, yeah. Yeah, and then Mike Plug was the artist. Mike right. Plug. I never heard of him before in my life. But uh, it, it, it's, they're very contentious about who created Ghost Rider, though. The three of them, they, they tend to argue. Yeah, oh, yeah. yes, there, there was many, uh, many a fight, many a disagreement, <laughs> yes. yeah. And apparently the big point of contention was who came up with the flaming skull. Yes. <laughs> That's very... Well, and then, but they, then they also try to argue, oh, well, there's other characters with flaming skulls. Like, I think there's actually a character 
in the 40s called Flaming Skull. <laughs> Pro- and, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. bet against it. That sounds yeah. pretty safe assumption there. I, I think Frederick or Friedrich even uh, sued Marvel, right? He tried to get the rights to Ghost Rider or yes, something? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And they settled um, out of court eventually, I believe. Right, which I mean, I think he got something out of it, but not much. Now, I have to ask you, in all of your studies, did you come across the pre-Marvel Western version of Ghost Rider? No. Pub- okay, because this is a version I did not know existed until like a few years ago, but technically the Marvel Western Ghost Rider is a, is a ripoff of another character called Ghost Rider whose real name was Rex Fury. He was created by Ray Crank and artist Dick Ayers. Um, and he first appeared in Tim Holt number 11, 1949. But that version of Ghost Rider is kind of forgotten about because Marvel, uh, it's not that they ripped him off, they kind of just stole him and just changed his name, right? And called him, <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. And so everyone kind of forgets about the original, but there actually was another Ghost Rider before the the Marvel Western Ghost Rider. Well, yeah, no idea. Yeah. I, I like the fact that he premiered in a comic book series called Tim Holt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They weren't even really trying back then. Okay. No. Nope. Uh, so Johnny Blaze, uh, he was the son of a stunt rider named Barton Blaze. Yeah. And Naomi Kale. And they were performers at the Quentin Carnival. Mm-hmm. And then Naomi just left Barton and abandoned Johnny, but she took their two other kids with her. Kind of weird, eh? Yeah. Cause it's like, well, Johnny must be a real dick then, right? She took the other two kids, but she's like, eh, you keep that Johnny. He, he was the the rough and tumble kid. I want nothing to do with Johnny. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, <laughs> it's just Johnny and his dad, Barton, and his, his dad, Barton, dies in a stunt, sadly. Yes. So Johnny gets adopted by a, another uh, stunt rider at the place at the same carnival. I guess they're pals. So he adopted his pal's son, and his name is Crash Simpson. Cause, awesome. Because when, when you're a stunt rider... You want to be known as Crash. Yeah. (laughs) How would I never think of that? Yeah, that's hilarious. (laughs) Crash. And and his wife was Mona, and they had a daughter named Roxanne. Yes. So they take in Johnny, and Mm -hmm. they're living as a little happy family. And as Johnny gets older, he he wants to learn how to ride motorcycles, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, I like to say motorcycle sometimes. Okay. It's It's like like my robot. Yeah. Right? So, so Johnny is uh, learning to ride his motorcycle, and it catches fire, and it explodes, it, and it kills Mona, his adoptive mother. And with her dying breath, she makes Johnny vow to never ride stunt motorcycles again. It's Look too dangerous. That. Drama. Marvel oh. drama right there. Oh, my I goodness. Yeah, this is crazy. So there's a lot of death around this Johnny kid. All right, so uh, they, they keep uh, he keeps growing older, though, him and uh, Crash Simpson. But then one day, uh, Crash Simpson says, hey, Johnny and Roxanne, I got the terminal cancer. Oh, no. This is sad. So what what would you do in such a situation, Michael? Would you, like, try and, you know, maybe take care of him, maybe change his diet? Look yeah, into, maybe like, or, you know, get some, uh, what's it called, chemotherapy or some radiation. Some exercise or, or something. something. Just try yeah. and change your lifestyle or something. But no, right. not Johnny Blaze. He goes right to the occult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He starts, obviously, he, he gets some ancient occult books. He starts studying and he summons the devil. Yep. He summons the devil and he makes a deal with the devil. He says, hey, you know, you say you save my, uh, my adopted dad here from uh, Crash Simpson from the, the terminal cancer and I will give you my soul. And the devil says, done, done and done. So, so Johnny Blaze is all happy. Look, I just, I just saved my, uh, my buddy there, my dad. Uh, and they got a big show coming up, I think, at Madison Square Garden. They got a big stunt show coming up. And uh, Crash is going to attempt to jump 22 cars, Mike L. 22 yeah. cars. Uh-huh. But Johnny Blaze isn't worried. He knows it's a dangerous stunt, but he's not worried because he made a deal with the devil mm-hmm. that, you know, Crash won't die. Mm-hmm. But Crash tries to do the stunt, and he dies. <laughs> so, <laughs> Whoops. so Johnny gets pissed. So he calls back the devil. He's like, hey, hey, devil, I need to talk to you for a second. <laughs> my, Crash Simpsons just died. My daddy just died. What gives? And the, <laughs> the devil tells him, hey, Johnny Blaze, I said he would not die from cancer. Gotcha. <laughs> so yep. he, he pulled awesome. a fast on Johnny Blaze. And he says, now it's time for you to pay up. I'm coming for your soul. But Roxanne saves him, Michael, because she comes in. She's also been studying the occult books. 
<laughs> and Chino's They're the just one thing laying around on his coffee table. <laughs> the one thing that can save you against the devil is, is love, pure mm. love. So she confesses her love for Johnny. Now, no, again, technically they're brother and sister, but you know, not really. That's fine. Yeah, that's yeah fine. not really. There are all kinds blood. of porn about this subject. <laughs> yes, but anyway, so <laughs> they're not blood legit. relatives. It's all right. No. So she confesses her love for him, and the purity of her soul drives away the devil. Great. But, uh oh, one other catch. You know, you can't just beat the devil and he says, all right, good good on you. You got me. No, 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 no. The devil gets his revenge by bonding Johnny's soul with a demon. Yes. So now, whenever Johnny is in the presence of evil, he turns into the ghost rider. Yes. His body becomes, uh, you know, all about, uh, what, what are they called? Hellfire. 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 Or hell, is it hell flame or hellfire? Hellfire. Okay. And his face, his head turns into a skull, a flaming skull. And he can shoot hellfire from his uh, hands. And uh, well, what else can this one do? Uh, Not much. Yeah. Um, he, he's pretty strong. I know that, right? He's really yeah, strong. he does get stronger uh, in uh, like human and more endurance, more strength, all but that kind of does, stuff. No, but he can't, doesn't have a, a chain to swing, right? No. He doesn't have the, the <laughs> panache spare, the stare. <laughs> the penance stare, no. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, the hellfire, when he shoots these people at the hellfire, it, it doesn't damage their uh, their bodies. It damages their souls. Mm-hmm. So it, like, burns them on the inside. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so he, the, the thing with the Ghost Rider is he's the devil's spirit of vengeance. Right. And he, he's supposed to claim... Because it sounds weird. Like, if you're a pawn of the devil, you think, hey, you'd be really cool with evil people. You know, like, mm-hmm. hey, I want to hang out with evil people. Maybe I'll bust into flames when I'm near good people. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. Because yeah. he's the spirit of vengeance uh, of the devil. And the devil, uh, I guess he wanted uh, the Ghost Rider out there and collect all these evil souls and bring them back to hell where they belong. Right. Like he's mad that these evil spirits have escaped hell Mm -hmm. and his control. So he sends the Ghost Rider out to collect them and bring them back home. That's basically the premise. To feed his hunger for souls. Uh, The series ran from 1972 to 1983, ending with issue 81. So here at issue 77, we're right near the end. Right. Just a few issues away. Um, spoiler alert, at the end of issue 81, the demon leaves Johnny. Yes, And uh, he eventually marries Roxanne, and they have two kids. How about that? But then, Uh-oh. he eventually comes back, doesn't he, as Ghost Rider? Yeah, I think so, because I, I don't know, it gets so convoluted. There's a lot of uh, Ghost Riders, and I think Roxanne yeah. may die at some point. Her and her kids die. I'm not sure what happens uh, after that. Yeah. Um, I, I know that Danny Ketch comes in around 1990-91, Yep, 90 to 98, Danny Ketch. Okay. Yep. But it's somewhere in there they brought back Johnny Blaze. And then I believe in it was 2005, Johnny Blaze became Ghost Rider again under, I think it was Daniel Way and then Garth Ennis, right? No idea. Okay. No idea. Because that, that was around the time of the movie, so maybe they're trying to make it all consistent. But uh, it could that, be, that, yeah. I, I personally, that's why I don't like legacy heroes. I, I'd rather they just stick with the original and just keep it going, you know? And so... He came back, and then they revealed that Johnny Blaze was... Or, they revealed that Danny Ketch was the long-lost brother of Johnny Blaze, and it's all ridiculous, and blah, yeah. blah, blah. So, just keep it simple, you know? But anyway, yeah, so... That's there's, that. a, there's been two other uh, Ghost Riders as well. Alejandra Jones. Yes, who no one remembers. Yeah, a female Ghost Rider, who I guess... Apparently, she came in uh, during that whole... Uh, what would they call it? Fear Itself? Wasn't that like a crossover series in marvel yeah like, I, re- I only read like one or two issues i don't remember. yeah that, that all seemed like nonsense yeah. so she, she was a female ghost rider and then uh the other ghost rider is robbie reyes right the new and, one yeah and he uh his gimmick is he doesn't ride a motorcycle michael he drives like a 69 dodge charger right right so that's right it's pretty cool uh, and if you watch marvel's uh agents of shield on the abc there robbie reyes was in season four of agents of shield that's right, and I was tempted to watch it, but since it wasn't Johnny Blaze, I didn't bother. Yeah, they did a good job, though, bringing the Ghost Rider on there. Like, uh, he, oh, really? He, you watched it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Season four of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is actually really good. Okay. They, uh, but they, they had the chains and everything, and so, yeah, it was okay. pretty good. All right, so that's the, uh, that's the Ghost Rider. That's the backstory of the Ghost Rider. And, We've barely uh, mentioned one thing, though. 
you know, you mon- you mentioned the Agents of Shield Ghost Rider. Was that version of Ghost Rider comparable to the Nicolas Cage version of Ghost Rider? Oh, yeah, I forgot. That. Now, I I thought the first Ghost Rider movie wasn't that bad. I thought it was serviceable. Thank you very much because yeah. apparently only me and my friend uh, Phil and you. And my other friend Kyle were the only ones on Earth that liked that movie, but it was actually pretty good, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, like it wasn't amazing, but it was a no. solid little comic book movie. Totally. The, the The second one is a train wreck. It's bad. It's yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, I don't know. I don't know what was going on in the second one. No. Wait, wow, that was some wild, wild stuff. But the first one, not too bad. It was. A, it was a good B movie, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Michael, we got a lot of other characters here we got to mention when we go through this plot because there's okay. a lot of villains and stuff, and it yes. adds to the backstory. Um, maybe let, let's just start with the plot, and then we'll I'll add the background sure, sure. as we go. Um, okay, so basically, we kind of drop in in the middle of the story. Ghost Rider is in agony, kind yeah. of, because it's hilarious because he's trapped inside the mind of uh, Johnny Blaze. Yes. And Johnny Blaze's mind, basically it looks like, what are these supposed to be, like nerve synapses kind of, right? <laughs> Yes, yeah. So he's standing on synapses. Yep. And it's so weird because he's being told a story yes. by someone, but he doesn't know who it is. Yeah, and, w- and we, the reader, don't know who it is either until... Right, right, we don't know later. either, not yet anyway. And so he's, he's basically told, oops, He's told a story about a, this is a Native American tribe, right? Uh, yeah, like really old school though. Like, yeah, uh, like they, they, uh, they kind of look Native American, but they actually use the word, where is it here? Oh, where is it? Uh, like, like I was thinking more like the Aztecs or something. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And, and they actually use a word that I, I was a, sort of familiar with, but it means pre-flood. Because they're talking about the, oh, um, the okay. ancient totem, yeah. Uh, where does it say it? I can't find yeah. it now. But basically, yeah, they basically. Oh, here it is. Anti. I can't pronounce this. Ant, antediluvian, which means pre-flood. Wow. So this is ancient, ancient. Yeah, you're right. Probably Aztecs. You, so you did. Is, you did much better with that pronunciation than penance, though. I'll give you. Yeah, that. I did. You're right. You're right. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you. Um, so anyway, so they're in this cave that, of course, has magic cave lighting, so everything's lit perfectly. Um, they find their way to this opening. Um, oh, and there's a conflict between the chief of the tribe and the, sort of the medicine man, right? Yeah. So they're kind of at odds with each other. And uh, they come into this opening in this cave, and there's this this demon with a skull head who's kind of trapped there. Yeah, it's like a, a big uh, statue. Like a... Yes, yes. Technically, you're right. You're right. This is, yes, as we learn later why, this is a statue. You're right. And then... Then they, uh, it sort of, he, he sort of comes to life because the, uh, the medicine man does like a spell or whatever. Yep. And uh, he comes to life and starts talking to them. And then basically, is it the, who, who sells, out, sells out who? Is it the medicine man uh, sells out the chief? Yes. Oh, no, yes, that's right, yeah. Because so he uh, sells out the chief. The, the yeah. demon's name is uh, Zer- Zarathos? Yeah, Z- Zarathos, Zarathos, yes. Yeah, no, Z A R A T H O S, Zarathos. And uh, so when he comes back to life, he needs a soul. You know, he's, he right. needs some souls to feed him. So the medicine man, he goes, hey, I got one right there for you. <laughs> yeah, right there. No one's doing so, anything with that soul. So he consumes the chief, and then the medicine man's the new chief. Yeah. Exactly. And so then they kind of cut this deal where this tribe or whatever they are is going to bring Zarathos souls and to kind of, you know, keep him, you know, his hunger quelled, right? Yep. But then, so here's where we have to start talking about other characters. So then Mephisto finds out about this. Yeah, because Zarathos is becoming like this, like this god to these other people. They're all worshiping him now. He's gaining power. And Mephisto's like, and, and by the way, we should remind people, Mephisto is basically Marvel's answer to the devil. Right. And I, but I, yeah, but I have to point out in the first Ghost Rider story, yeah. it was the actual devil. And yes. then later they said, oh, it was, it was, by the way, it was Mephisto. This is when they say, by the way, it's Mephisto. This is when they retcon it. This issue. Oh, this is the first time? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, in that issue one, or Marvel Spotlight 5 or wherever the hell they did it, uh, it was actually Satan. And the idea back then was, because I guess there was a character, Satan, who was the father of Damien Hellstorm. Right. And his sister, I forget her name, uh, whatever it is. So Satana? that was the guy who was yeah. going to be in charge of Ghost Rider. But now they, they made it Mephisto here. 
And then I think they even went back and made it Satan again and then Mephisto again. I don't know. People just kept changing it. Sure. But for our story, it's Mephisto. But it's funny here because when he's talking to his demon buddies, he actually specifies. He goes, perhaps these facts have escaped Satan, Thog, Satanish, and the rest. But Mephisto sees all. So they still acknowledge that the other Satan is real. It's just that it wasn't him. It was Mephisto. And I believe Satanus is Damien Hellstorm's sister. Is that... That no, name? I think it's Satana. Oh. Satanish is someone completely different. Oh, okay. Satana. But, yeah, that sounds but, right. Satana. But Satanish sounds like a description, right? Like, an, like, yeah, you're kind of a Satanish type of guy, you know? So, kind a little of a weird Satanish name. on the yeah. weekends. Yeah, Exa- yeah exactly. <laughs> so, so, so but yeah, so then this, um, so the new chief and his wife become the leader of this tribe, right? No, 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 no. Oh. The, 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 the medicine man... And Zeratos, they're still just consuming all the people. The people you're thinking of, they're a different little tribe, a guy and his wife, and they, 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 uh, they like kidnap them, and they want to sacrifice the wife. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. she's pure of heart and soul, you know? Right. So. So, so then, so basically, Ma- so then, so go ahead. Well, then Mephisto, it, well, he's mad that all these people are worshiping Zeratos, and he's like, all right, we got to put a stop to this. So he sees what they're doing with this lady, and Mephisto comes down and he and he gets the, the her her like I guess new uh, fiance. I don't know if they're married right. yet. Yeah, yeah fiance. <laughs> and he says, "Hey, I'll save her, but you got to give me your soul." You I know? like how he's touching them like they're on a comic book. You see that the way the shadow is on his hand. Isn't that awesome? Uh, I'm not looking at the issue. Oh, the you're going from memory. <laughs> I'm looking yeah. right at the issue here. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take your word for it. So, uh, so this guy. He makes the deal uh, with Mephisto, gives his soul to spare his wife. So when Zarathos is about to, you know, consume her soul, this fella, he steps up to him and says, no, Zarathos, you will not consume her soul. I'm going to stop you. So when Zarathos says, all right, well, I'll just take your soul. And he reaches down and he grabs the fella, but he has no, no effect on him. Nothing whatsoever. Why, Michael? Because he doesn't have a soul. He already gave it to yes. Mephisto. Right. So when all his Zarathos' worshippers see this, they're like, oh, wait, maybe Zarathos isn't that strong after all. This little guy right here is stopping him. So they start to doubt him. Zarathos starts freaking out. Uh, he's confused. He doesn't know what's going on. And right there at that moment of weakness, Mephisto appears. And, and Mephisto beats the holy hell out of Zarathos. Of course, this isn't a fist fight. I like the fist fights. Yes, you do. But these are like <laughs> supernatural beings, so there's like stuff coming out of their fingers. That's how they fight. Yes. They like point their fingers and then things happen. So Mephisto defeats Zarathos. And he puts an end to this whole, uh, you know, cult worshiping him. And Mephisto takes Zarathos <coughs> down to like, uh, well, he hangs out in hell. That's uh, Mephisto's realm down in hell. Basically, yeah. <clears throat> and and to, to punish Zarathos, he, he says he's going to bond his soul to somebody or his spirit to somebody. And eventually, that somebody is Johnny Blaze. Right. So that's how he punishes Zarathos. And, and Zarathos isn't aware of any of this. Like, no. Uh, it, so so he's, now it's he, been erased. Yeah, he's hearing this story for the first time from this unknown narrator. And he's like, wow, well, oh, this explains why I'm with Johnny Blaze and all that other stuff. So he's learning this as we are as well. Right. I'm trying to think of any other key points. To, oh, well, that fella who uh, he sold his soul to Mephisto to save his girl, then he couldn't be with his woman anymore. He had to leave her because he says, I don't have a soul anymore. I'm, I have no emotions. I have to go. So he just leaves yeah. her. Yeah. I think he becomes like a bad guy that comes yes. back. Yes. Uh, his name is Centurius, I believe. Yes. Centurius. And yeah, he, he becomes a prominent name later on, I think mm-hmm. in other incarnations of Ghost Rider and stuff. But uh, I, I, well, does it? Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, there's also the subplot of what's going on with Johnny Blaze in the meantime. Yeah, I, I, just one real quick thing about some Oh, curious. sure, sure. I think at the end of this series, when Zarathos leaves Johnny Blaze, he goes to try and fight Centurius. Ah, uh, okay, I think, okay. if I remember. And then they okay. pick that up. But yeah, so, so what's going on with Johnny Blaze then while well, this is happening? So, so Johnny Blaze is um, sort of just hanging out and... Uh, yeah. What what is this is like? See, this is like flashing back to kind of like other characters here, and 
that's why this is a weird issue to come in on. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, good, good pick, Mike Al. Yeah. I know. Like, I kind of <laughs> regretted it, but whatever. He ends up uh, interacting with this guy, um, Vincenzo, who I don't know anything about. Yeah, all right. See, I'll, I can fill you in on this. I can sure, sure. <laughs> So what you need to know about Johnny Blaze is he's, he's riding a stunt motorcycle for that uh, Quentin Carnival, all right? Okay. He's still doing that. And the, the owner of that carnival is a fellow named Ralph Quentin. And he also had freak shows, a lot of freaks okay. at a carnival. So one of these uh, pairs of freaks, they had a son. And R- Ralph Simpson, R- Ralph Simpson, <laughs> Ralph Quentin, <laughs> uh, he, uh, he didn't treat them that well. And he was responsible for an accident that caused these two, uh, this freak couple to die. And their son got very mad. And his, his son left the carnival, became rich and wealthy, bought his own island, and populated it with freaks. Right, right. <laughs> and, his, and his name is the Freak Master. Okay. <laughs> the <okay>. Freak Master. <laughs> now, we have, he's mentioned, I think, in this issue, but we don't see him. Uh, or maybe he's not even mentioned yet. I don't know. But... Um, he kind of looks like... Do you remember that actor and singer from the 1970s, Paul Williams? No. All right, he's a blonde fellow right with glasses. Now. He kind of looks a little bit like uh, Cousin Oliver from the Brady Bunch. But Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I see him now. Yep, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, everyone would recognize him, if, but maybe the name doesn't. But if you saw him, yeah, you know, oh, that sure. guy. Sure. Okay. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> he uh, has his own little island uh, where the freaks, and he makes his own freaks, too. So, okay. He's doing all kinds of experiments and whatever. So then one day, uh, oh, th- this ties into another lady that's mentioned in this issue in the flashback, Steel Wind. Uh, Go- Ghost Rider had a, a fight with Steel Wind in the previous issue, I guess. Okay. A- and her name is Ruriko Sumara, and she was a right. Japanese artist who was on a pleasure cruise when the boat exploded. <laughs> now, I don't know if you have to pay extra for that when you go on a pleasure cruise. <laughs> yeah. But so she uh, washed up on the shore of the Freak Master's Island. Okay. And her body's all mangled and destroyed. So the Freak Master saves her, Mike L, by how? Making her a robot. He puts right. cyborg parts into her body. He rebuilds right, her body. Right. So she's half lady, half a robot. And uh, she feels loyalty to him. So she's, she uh, says, hey, all right, I'll serve you. I'll be your minion. And she is steel wind. Steel mm-hmm. wind. And so the Freak Master wants vengeance against... Quentin Carnival Steel. So he sends Steel Wind there, and she's going around the country, like basically uh, sabotaging all these carnivals. So she ends up at the Quentin Carnival, and I guess she races Johnny Blaze to see who will be their stunt rider, and she beats him, but she cheats, but she beats him. So th- that's, that brings Steel Wind into Johnny Blaze's, uh, you know, uh, sphere and whatever. So they start becoming uh, rivals and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where we're at now. I, I think. Uh, maybe that's why he leaves the Quentin Carnival, I guess, because she beat him, you know? Okay. But I don't know. I, who knows what the hell's going on with that list stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Steel Wind's first appearance is Ghost Rider 76, so he missed her by one one issue. Right. Uh, so, but the freaks <clears throat> in the carnival, they play a huge role in Ghost Rider in his story. The carnival, if you like carnivals, Ghost Rider is the comic book for you. It's a cool concept. I do like this. I, I love this concept. Yeah. I don't, I'm not big on it's, freaks and motorcycles. It, it's so different. Really it's care. at least yeah. different, you know? So uh, that yeah. Vincenzo guy you mentioned Nothing. before, yep. he worked at the carnival. He was their fortune teller at the carnival. Right. Okay. But Freak Master kidnapped him, and he put some stuff into his brain, some robot parts or something, so, so make him like he can like project his thoughts now. And he was sending distress signals to Johnny Blaze, like a big picture of his face would appear and say yeah i need help right right so johnny blaze is going to save vincenzo and vincenzo looks like the classic fortune teller guy at a carnival like a turban with a jewel on it and everything and a mustache and a little beard so uh johnny blaze goes to save vincenzo but vincenzo's like hey man i don't know what's going on (laughs) this is like a trap and all these freaks come out michael right just a bunch of freaks right (laughs) they're they're (laughs) And they come uh, to beat up go- the Johnny Blaze. They're beating up the Johnny Blaze. One guy's got claws, like crab yes. claws. Like lobster claws, favorite. yeah. Right, yeah, and, lobster claws. And, and we should mention, throughout all this, Johnny Blaze is trying not to become the Ghost Rider. Yeah, that's a big part of this, is he's trying to subdue the Ghost Rider, not let him out. And that's why the Ghost Rider's in Johnny Blaze's head, like, hey, let me out, let me out. You know, he's trying to figure out what's going on. 
he wants to come out. And Johnny Blaze says, no, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to become Ghost Rider. So what happens? He tries to fight these freaks. You can't fight freaks. No. There's just too many of them, and they overpower him. We, it's kind of a fist fight, but not really. He throw, we see him throwing one punch, and then they just swarm him, and, and they take him out. But uh, Mike L., they have uh, – I'm trying to think. There's a, a current commercial on the TV. I'm guessing in Canada you probably don't have this. I think it's for like a uh, – I don't know, is it for deodorant or something? But uh, where a guy is half motorcycle, half man, and they call him, uh, uh, what do they call him? M- uh, motar or something? Like motor, okay. mantar, motar? Uh, you know what? And- I haven't watched a commercial since 1996, so I don't know. <laughs> well, you're lucky. Yeah. But that's basically what they want to do to Johnny Blaze. So he, he was like his torso would be there, and then he'd be like welded into a motorcycle. And he'd be half man, half motorcycle. It's gross. Like, they show that he doesn't really have legs. <laughs> they kind of just meld into the the frame for, like, the wheels. It's really weird. Yeah, I, I, like, I like how he has the whole, like, blueprint for it. Like, he has, uh, like, almost like a PowerPoint presentation of how he's going to make yeah, him into Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they show it on the wall. Look, this will be you. <laughs> yeah. This, this will be you. You won't have legs. You, you Nothing else. You'll be a motorcycle. And a man. <laughs> so they're just showing him this uh, little presentation of uh, Johnny Blaze being a half motorcycle, half man. And all his other freaks are there. And But then Johnny Blaze escapes, Michael, because <laughs> one of one of the uh, the doctors, they were they were a little lazy and they left a scalpel where he could reach it. I love that. But it seems entirely implausible because his hands are strapped down. So they would have to put it like really like a millimeter from his fingers for him to get there, you know? Okay, good yet, point, yeah. <laughs> yet yet he, somehow, he somehow gets the scalpel, twists it around in his hand, and manipulates it, and he, he cuts the leather strap. Yes. And then, uh-oh, he's free. Look out. So you guys got some hell to pay, because I'm going to let the Ghost Rider out on you. But what happens, Michael? The Ghost Rider does not come out. <laughs> yeah. He's too, <laughs> he's too busy. Right. He's talking to that other guy. Uh, about, Nightmare. You know, the we haven't, yeah, we haven't mentioned Nightmare. Should we mention that now? He's yeah, this, explain who Nightmare is. Uh, he's the guy telling the story. He to, is the guy telling Ghost the story, yes. And you know what's funny? I don't know much about Nightmare. Um, what is he a Doctor Strange character? Uh, I want to say Doctor Strange. I, I think he did cross paths with Doctor Strange. Um, he started off in, like, I don't know, all these other weird, like, mystery of suspense kind of stories, you know what I mean? Okay, okay. But he's part of this whole... Uh, other realm of like gods and he's basically the master of the subconscious and i guess he fought spider-man and the hulk on different occasions okay and he was giving spider-man bad dreams okay okay i don't know it's all nonsense i don't like any of this stuff oh great okay yeah i don't like any of it none of it perfect but nightmare he's dressed in like this green leotard with pointy elf boots or something yep scary stuff looks like an old man yeah yeah pretty weird so that's nightmare yeah, who cares? <laughs> okay. And then it kind of ends really abruptly. So, yeah, Johnny Blaze is kind of getting subdued by these freaks because he, even though he escapes, he still gets the beat down. Yeah. And then basically it kind of just ends with... Um, oh, shit. Just a minute here. <laughs> uh, one second. I'm on the digital version here. I just got to go back now. <laughs> well, it just... It- <clears throat> it just ends with that Ronaldo guy. He was scared. He's like, oh, no, Ghost Rider's coming. And then when Ghost Rider doesn't come out, he's like, all right, well, just beat him up again, freaks. Yeah, exactly. So they beat him up. They, they load him full of more drugs. They strap him back to the table. And uh, so it looks like Ronaldo, the issue ends with Ronaldo all happy, and he's going to make him a motorcycle. Yeah, he's going to put him into a motorcycle. Right. Make so him a cyborg that's motorcycle. That's basically how it ends. Yeah. yeah. Weird issue. Weird story. Got to admit. Okay, also, Nightmare was telling uh, Zoranthos not to be the Ghost Rider for Johnny Blaze. He's right. Like, no, screw, screw Johnny Blaze. Let him figure this out for himself. Exactly. We got other things to do. I, now, I don't really know why, like, what Nightmare wants to do. Like, if he's just doing this to cause trouble, or if he has another master plan, maybe to get, to go after Mephisto or something, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not but, sure either, yeah. We yeah, shall, so... So find out when we, you know, rush to read the rest of these issues, right? Yeah, I will never find out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think so. I am not reading anymore. Ghost Rider. So far, I think we're, I don't know, we, I think we've done, what, four of my picks? I think we're we're zero for four. <laughs> yeah, they're all pretty yeah. bad. Anyway. <laughs> um, 
I think the Thor one was the best one he picked Ooh, so Oh, and that one wasn't even great, but anyway. No. no. <laughs> that one, but at least it had the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes, yes, it did. Uh, in, the minion, in the Minions of Menace. Yeah, of course. The minions of Who Menace. forget that? Yeah. So that's basically the Ghost Rider, the backstory here. A lot of freaks, a lot of carnival stuff. Um, oh, there's also a little scene, like a half of one page, we get to see a girl looking for Johnny Blaze. I believe that's Roxanne. Yes, that's what I was going to say. I'm guessing that's Roxanne, because yeah. they don't identify her in the book, but I'm sure if you're a regular reader, you know it's Roxanne. Right, but, right. Uh, you know, I had no idea, so I had to, but I'm assuming it's Roxanne. So she's looking for the Johnny Blaze. Yes. Uh, what, what about the cover, Micah? We didn't mention the cover. Uh, there's like... Uh, because Zarathos, his demon uh, form, it's kind of like a skeleton, upper body wise, a skull and a rib cage and collarbone and everything. But he also has like muscles. Yeah. Like a body. Yeah. It's kind of weird because the, the whole the whole weird thing about Ghost Rider has always been that even though he's a skeleton, uh, other than his skull, he, he 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 seems to have a regular physique of a man underneath, right? Yeah. So I think yeah. that's what this is trying to explain. But how can he have like a physique underneath if he's a skeleton? But this is it, because he's bony. Oh, I see. I think that's what it is. But he yeah, so like he's bony, but he also seems to have muscles, but they're all kind of yeah. white, like a skeleton. So it's kind of weird. Yeah. So the cover is just uh, Zarathos going nuts. Like it looks in a <clears throat> small village town. He's he's got people in his hands. Like you know, it's consuming souls. And then Ghost Rider zipping around his feet on his motorcycle. Right. Right. Zing. And this is this is by the the same artist that did the interiors, which is Bob Budiansky. Budiansky, yeah. Yep. Uh, do Do you want to? Well, let's start with Bob Budiansky since you mentioned him. Sure. Uh, he he is the artist of this. He was also the co-plotter. Yes. He he and J M De Mateus, they plotted these issues together. Right. So uh, Bob Budiansky was born in 1954 in the Bronx, New York. Yes. And Mike L, he's big claim to fame. Uh, well, he only has two art credits to his name here in Marvel. Uh, he did Ghost Rider issues 68 to 81, so right to the end of the series. And then he did a limited series, Prince Namor, yes, the Submariner. Which I've, which I've read, yep. And that was four issues, and he drew that with also uh, J.M. DeMatteis. That's wrote right, it. yep. So they had quite the little collaboration there. But those are the only art credits he has um, with True. Marvel. And then he, well, he actually colored some issues of The Punisher and another's title, and he actually did one issue as a letterer. Okay, I didn't so know he, that. So he, he did everything. But he was also a staff editor for Marvel from 83 to 96. That's right. That's right. And as a staff editor, he got involved with something very dear to your heart, Michael. So why don't you take it away? <laughs> you talking about Transformers by any means? <laughs> That's exactly right. Yes. Bob Budiansky is the character creator and personality creator of nearly all the Transformers. And... G.I. Jolie and I had the honor of having him at a, as a guest at a, one of our comic conventions or our, our arts festivals or our pop culture festivals a few years ago. It was called uh, Comic Book Syndicon, which is now called Action, and Bob Budiansky was our guest of honor. And uh, he was an absolute blast to have out. He was a great guy. He was really nice. We got to hang out with him out afterward at the bar. And, wow. Oh, yeah. Like we were, we, he, we swapped stories. He told us inside info on Marvel. It was great. And anyway, just to make a long story short, because this is all available on our website. If you just go Comic Book Syndicate, uh, Bob Budiansky, this will all come up. He did like an hour long Q&A and then a question and answer and blah, blah, blah. Well, actually, that's the same thing. A Q&A, but before that, he did like a little lecture. But basically, yeah. um, uh, Denny O'Neill and Jim Shooter came up with most of the backstory for the Transformers as far as like Cybertron and the four million years and coming to Earth. But it was Bob Budiansky over a weekend, it was yeah. over Thanksgiving weekend, he came up with nearly every single name for the first year's worth of Transformers, including Megatron, Starscream, Prowl, Blue Streak, all of them. I think the only one... And he, the personalities And the well. personalities, yes. So yeah. he, he wrote out the personalities and he created all the names and that's what they used for the boxes, for the Transformers, if you flip the back the box over and you read the name and the little description that was all the tech written. specs yes that's the right tech, tech specs. specs right that was all written by him and i believe and you had to use that little piece of red cellophane to put it over to see how strong they were right Remember? and i'll have you know yeah. that i've got about 85 transformers and almost every one of them i still have in the original boxes wow yeah. you need to sell that immediately i've been go, meaning to do that for years and i just keep putting it off because it's so hard <laughs> for me to part with them i sold all mine years ago oh really um, did you get any money for them like good money 
Uh, yeah, I didn't have any of them in the boxes or anything. You know, they were just loose. But okay. I did get some good money. I think I sold them when I was like 23 or so, and so that's like 20 years ago. And I remember I got like uh, close to 100 bucks for like uh, what was that? What was the big jet that looked like Robotech? Jetfire. Jetfire. Right. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And I, and I think uh, Shockwave was another good one. Oh, Shockwave! I'll never sell him. <laughs> but Mike, oh yeah, when I was searching uh, for info on this uh, Bob Budiansky, I uh, the video popped up. Oh really? really? Yeah. Oh, so I watched it. Excellent. And, uh, and yeah, apparently Jim Shooter did a lot of the. He wrote a six-page treatment. Yes. And that's basically what all the Transformers uh, mythos and all the history. That's based on Jim Shooter's original six-page. Because Hasbro had these toys, right? But they didn't have any like you know story with them they were just these toys and they cut a deal with marvel because marvel had just made a deal with hasbro for gi joe like a year ago before this yes so they just wanted to do something else with hasbro so they said all right we'll work with these toys here with the transformers and we'll provide all the stories and names and everything so shooter wrote that six page treatment he was going around trying to get other people to do it and none of the other editors wanted to do it so he eventually went to uh, Budiansky, and he said, yeah, I'll do it. And like you said, he did it over a weekend. He came up with all the names and the personalities over a weekend. It's amazing, eh? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So, yeah, the Transformers. And then he went on to write the comic book. He wrote many issues of the comic book. Yeah, I think he started with number – because he was the editor at first. And I think it was uh, Ralph Macchio and Jim Salakrup wrote the first four issues. And then – Bob Budiansky took over with number five, and I think he wrote five to 55. Yeah, and uh, we mentioned he was an editor there, and part of the, some of the books he worked on as an editor was Daredevil, Fantastic Four, and he oversaw the Spider-Man clone saga. Yes. So, yeesh. Probably his <laughs> lowest point, but that's okay. <laughs> Let's just focus on Transformers. It can all be hits, yeah, exactly. Uh, in, in 2010, Mike Ellett, BotCon, 2010, Budiansky was inducted in the Transformers Hall of Fame. Excellent. Oh. Was, he, was that the first year they started that, or was he not in the first year? I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think he was in the first year, but maybe the second year, but he should have been in the first year, if not. Yeah. Anyway. He's one of only four humans, I guess, in the Hall of Fame. Excellent. He deserves it. <laughs> well, Jim Shooter better be in there. He should be. Know? He should be. Yeah. And Denny O'Neill thought of the name Optimus Prime, so he should be in there somewhere. Oh, that's too. right. Yes, I meant to mention that. Yeah. Because I guess, uh, but Shooter didn't like the original... Uh, all the original names, but they kept Optimus Prime. But he didn't like the other stuff they did. That's why he kept looking for other people to do it. Right. And then that's when Budiansky came in. All right, so that's uh, Bob Budiansky. Now, the art here, I, I think uh, it's pretty, it's average, you know, just it's fine. <sighs> I, I think I, I think he's a, he's sort of like, a, um, I don't want to say closer to a DC artist, but he is closer to like a Kurt Swanish style of art yes yeah. you know what that's exactly correct yes yeah because <laughs> uh, a lot of the figures are kind of like flat or uh you know a little uh static and flat but <laughs> not you know. kirby-esque not action-packed uh, more subdued and the yes. inking really helps the inking is by a guy i've never really heard of before what is his name um he's only created yep. a Des Dezubin. And his full name is, it's, I've got it right here, um, Kevin DeZubin. I've never heard of him. Yeah, I'm not familiar with him either. And we should mention, like, uh, on the first splash page of the issue, it, it's a nice a big picture of uh, the skull, Ghost right. Rider skull, like, in agony and pain. But the, the box for the, cr the creators, they just mention him by last name. Yeah, kind of odd. Yeah, it's very right. strange. And just the layout of the box is weird. It's like it was added uh, in later, yeah. eh? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, so the art's not the greatest, uh, but you know, it's serviceable. Um, there's nothing too memorable, though, I would say. Uh, there's maybe not a specific memorable image, but overall I do like it. It's very clear. It's nice. Nice to look at. All right, so, so, so the uh, writer and co-plotter here is J.M. DeMatteis. Yes. Uh, born, born in 1953 in Brooklyn, New York. He broke in writing horror comics for DC, Michael, just like we say every week. Oh, they're always busting in on horror comics. Right. And his first story that got published was something called The Blood Boat in Weird World Tales number 70 in 1978. Really? really? He started doing fill-in work for Marvel in 79, uh, but his first regular gig was writing The Defenders in 1980. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm sure I've read a couple of those, yep. He did 10 total issues of Ghost Rider, uh, including the final eight. So he closed it out right. uh, up to issue 81. Then, as we mentioned, in 1984, he did the Prince Namor limited series with Budiansky. 
in 87, Mike Ellie teamed with Mike Zeck to do Craven's Last Hunt. Oh, that's right. That's right. Excellent story. I've never read it. Oh, it's really good. I always wanted to read it. I know all about it. I love Craven. I love Mike Zeck. Uh, I, I need to read this. And apparently it, it went over all three uh, Spider-Man titles, correct? Yes. Like, it, it, see, I wasn't even it, aware it, of that. It lasted three months, and it went, I'm not sure the order, but it went Spectacular Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, Web of Spider-Man, then back to Spectacular, Amazing Web. Yeah, it was really cool. I always just had it in my mind like it was just a Spectacular Spider-Man thing. I didn't even realize it went all, all yep. three. It was really cool. Uh, so then he went to D.C. and he did Justice League of America. Yep. And then it relaunched. He did uh, Justice League International, I guess. When Wait, it the funny out. version. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that one, but that was what's known as the blah ha, ha uh, era of the Justice League. So it was that's okay. when they had uh, Booster Gold and Blue Beetle and Guy Gardner. And it started out kind of funny, and then it got really funny. And then in Kevin Maguire's words, it got too funny. And then, and then, <laughs> yeah. And then it got canceled and then rebooted okay. again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, comedy's a fine line. Exactly. With, uh, it got silly after a while, yeah. Uh, he, he, he was a very prolific guy. He, he wrote a lot of different titles. Uh, his other credits on Marvel include Amazing Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, Captain America, Daredevil, X-Factor, and he also helped launch the DC Vertigo line. Really? Oh, is it with Moon yeah. Moonshadow? I think. Yeah, I, I think can't it was Moonshadow. But he, he, uh, he did some of the early titles on there. And then he did a lot of work on animated TV and movies for both Marvel and DC. So, um, like a Batman Bold and... What is it? Brave and the Bold. Bold. Brave and the Brave. Bold. Remember, we reviewed a combo. <laughs> that was our first That's right. flea market fantasy. But I guess there is a uh, animated series with that title, and I guess he wrote for that. And yeah. he wrote a bunch of different stuff for both companies. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I actually think he's, I think he's one of those writers that started out as kind of just a, I don't want to say generic, but he was sort of just a typical Marvel writer. And then he sort of evolved into, like like you said, like a Vertigo writer, like he became that level. Whereas most of the Vertigo writers were all British, right? He was somebody that came up through the ranks just doing typical superhero American comics. So it was kind of cool yeah, because he's actually a really good writer. Do you have any other uh, De Mateus issues that stand out, like you, you remember? Well, I mean, of? he had a really good run on Spectacular Spider-Man with Sal Buscema that was, like, really long. Like, I don't know, 50 issues that were really good. Did, weren't they doing stuff with, like, the... Uh, was that the Hobgoblin stuff, or...? No, that, no. that was probably... You're thinking of the Jerry Conway stuff, like, around... Oh, in, you know what he did? He, didn't he bring back the Green Goblin or something? Uh, he... Pr yeah, I think he was part of that when they brought back the original Norman Osborn. No, sorry. No, I think it, when, when J.M. Uh, De Matisse was on it, it was when Norman Os... Sorry, Harry Osborn, when he died. When him and Spider-Man fought for the last time, and Harry Osborn died in Spectacular number 200. I think that was him. Okay. I knew there's a goblin involved in something he did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know that, that much. Him, yep. And then, I mean, he's just... I mean, it's... I, I think it was uh, on Justice League International, I started to notice how good his dialogue was. And, it was, and with Craven's Last Hunt, I realized that... He was one of those guys that was kind of writing close to that Alan Moore style of writing. And then when he did Moonshadow, Moonshadow was really good if you're into that kind of thing, like sort of fantasy or whatever. He, that was really, so those are the ones I'd recommend are Moonshadow, um, Craven's Last Hunt, and Justice League International. Yeah, the, the writing here is fine. Again, it's, uh, you know, nothing spectacular, but it's... Uh, the, the dialogue, there's not a lot of corny dialogue, I don't recall remembering. Yeah, um, that's what I mean. I think that's kind of one of his specialties. He's really good at dialogue. Yeah, it, it, I guess it's interesting the way the, the story was structured with all the flashbacks and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I get, you know, the Mephisto stuff. So, eh, you know, whatever. I'm just not a fan of this kind of thing, you know? This I don't genre? like. I don't like supernatural fantasy stuff. Oh. I, what do I like, Mike? I like fist fights. You like fisticuffs. You know? I like people getting punched. Like, <laughs> yeah. Same with like Do yeah. Dr. Strange. And all that. Okay, Dr. Strange. Uh, let's see if you can... Uh, all right, you're the master of all the Sorcerer Supreme. Can you stop a left hook? Let's find out. Yeah, you know? yeah. Let's punch him right in the face. <laughs> but, uh, so I don't know. I, this just isn't my thing. Understandable. But whatever. I, I still like learning about Ghost Rider, though. Sure. I learned a lot uh, about the Ghost Rider. Because I, I had no idea Freaks played such a pivotal role in Ghost Rider. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. I think the reason that I liked it when I, because I, I started with like the first handful of first issues, and the thing I liked about it was most superheroes are sort of a variation on Superman, right? So it's like you got a guy who has powers, he has a regular day job, and he has a secret identity. And Ghost Rider was so weird because you know his job is to be a stunt motorcycle driver. And he yeah. works in a circus, and it mixes in the devil, and it's just it's just a, such a weird, you know, backstory. And it was probably inspired by things like uh, Evil Knievel, right? Yes, and absolutely. Like that era. So it was just a whole different world. I just really like it. Now, do you know uh, much about the Danny Ketch? Like, what was his was what was his deal? Like, was he an accountant? No, nah, you know, I actually, I, I, I read it, but I just remember the, the art in that 90s Ghost Rider was really good, but the, the stories were never great, so I don't really remember what he did, to be honest. Yeah. And I also so, don't think that he was bonded, he was not bonded to Zarathos either. It was completely really? different. Yeah, he wasn't. It was really weird. It's like huh. they couldn't keep the story straight. I don't know. It's just weird that all these different characters are called Ghost. It's like they try to make it consistent in the movie by showing that the Western, the cowboy... Yeah also had the flaming skull but as we know the, that's the, not true at all that's not true yeah. at all no exactly <laughs> yeah so. he had no that's what screwed me up because sam elliott was the western guy in the movie right 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 and, and but yeah he had nothing to do with the demon stuff at all no um what's i gonna say about danny Ketch? yeah because uh like danny catches in the 90s stunt riding motorcycle people weren't really a big occupation in the 90s no no not at all definitely seems like a 70s thing right more, but uh yeah and that's that's probably why the uh the series ended too like oh well it's 83 now you know it's not many not yeah. many people jump in school buses on motorcycles yeah and it's also funny because around that same time is when things like uh master of kung fu and power man and iron fist all sort of came to an end it's because they were all 70s fads right like kung fu movies yeah. black exploitation things like that and so all this stuff kind of th this was all canceled really before i got into comics so it was all kind of something i didn't really know much about now, Mike L., since it is Shocktober, as you like to say. Yes. Wait, did you say Shocktober or Shocktober? Shocktober. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, I, I've known you for many years, and I've never once heard you say Shocktober. Really? That's <laughs> shocking. I can't believe it. So do we, am, I, am I supposed to keep the theme going? Because I really didn't oh, with great. my next pick. Well, I mean, ideally, yes, but if not, that's fine. Well, well the way the weeks go... I think uh, if we plan, I think maybe my pick will be around again by the time Halloween gets here. So maybe I'll do something then. Okay. Okay. But but for this next one, uh, well, are, you, are we done with Ghost Rider? Did oh you yeah, I can't, we, we, we didn't recommend. We didn't recommend it. We didn't rate. Oh yeah. It. Um, <laughs> I I give it. Uh, you you know what? I'm gonna give it a seven, only wow. because yeah, only because. I don't think it's a. It's, it's certainly not a great first issue to read as an intro. But it was good enough that, you know, I definitely want to read more. So I'll give it a seven. What? Yeah. <laughs> I give it a three. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't even. Because, again, the art's nothing special, nothing to write home about. Uh, the book is very boring. Like, there is nothing going on. <laughs> it's just. I think it's kind of the middle of a story. That's why it doesn't seem great. It's just people telling stories to each other. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, all right, that's fine. But not a lot of action. We get the one scene where the freaks beat up Johnny Blaze, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, it's just filling in backstory and exposition and, you know. Not a great issue, but maybe a good chapter. That's my opinion, anyway. They're, they're, they're going to turn him into a motorcycle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't wait to this see is, that. It's all out. ridiculous. I love it's it. All, the, the, villain's, the big villain's name is Freak Master. Come awesome. on. It's also, it's, I have to point out, the reason I picked it is because I believe it's Bob uh, Budiansky or Budiansky's first attempted at plotting a comic so it's one of his first writing credits yeah well at least he has the transformers you got this, it this yeah movie. okay so yeah i'm not a, not a huge fan of this uh but if you want to guess learn the backstory of ghost rider here you go you got it here's your chance so so i right. recommend it okay so that wraps up ghost rider so what's next week well, I was avoiding Spider-Man because I know you got a new, uh, you got the other podcast, the Spider Cast. Yes, here comes the Spider Cast. Here comes the Spider Cast. But Mike, I, I got to pick Spider-Man. All know? right. Because when I was a kid, Spider-Man was my guy. Okay. He was, him and Captain America were the two guys when I was a kid. 
So we're going to go Spider-Man, uh, Amazing Spider-Man issue 111. Oh, nice. This okay. is from 1972, and it features Spider-Man clashing with one Mr. Craven the Hunter. Oh, perfect. And Half Man, Half Monkey, the Gibbon. Oh, nice, the Gibbon. Okay. <laughs> so we get to get a little more monkey into the show. Right. Because you can never have enough monkey. Exactly. <laughs> So uh, Craven and Gibbon. I love Craven the Hunter. He he's one of my favorite villains ever. He's just great. Wow, I can't believe you haven't read Craven's Last Hunt then. I know, which is so weird because I love Craven the Hunter. Right. I know all about it. You know, I know like what happens and everything, but I never actually read the issues. Sure, okay. So I I, I need to and, and really up until, you know, just recently there was no way to even do it because you know unless you own the issues, you right. know what I mean? But nowadays, yeah, there is a way for me to do it and I should do it. <laughs> so hopefully get to it. And we will uh, be reviewing yeah. it on our uh, Here Comes the Spider-Man or Here Comes the Spider-Cast podcast, but it's like two years away, so you, you'd have to wait. <laughs> yeah, because you guys are doing all the 80s Spider-Man. Right. right. Every week equals one month of real Spider-Man time. So so this is – the issue we'll be doing next week is from 72. Right. And it, it's written by Jerry Conway, and it's drawn by John Romita, the yes. father. Oh, John, Can't wait. I loved, Classic Yeah, he's the right best. There, I, yeah. I love John Romita. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, I, I think when I think Spider Man, I think John Romita. Me too. Like that's the artist. Absolutely, for me. absolutely. Yeah. I have a lot to say about him, so that's good. So that's next week. Spider Man, Amazing Spider Man, one eleven. Craven Gibbon. Perfect. Excellent. I'm pumped. <laughs> Super pumped. Hey, Mike L. When they do another Spider Man movie, wouldn't you like to see Craven the Hunter be the villain? Oh, wouldn't that be I would, great. I would love to see the exact story of Craven's Last Hunt adapted as a Spider Man movie. I think that'd be great. Because you don't need fancy special effects you don't need nothing you just need a guy you know exactly just talking that's all you need <laughs> absolutely yeah i'm sure they'll do it talking. one day i hope so uh, so there you go all right so i guess that's it for this week that wraps it up okay so thank you again for joining us this has been flea market fantasy please make sure to share this episode tell your pals about us leave a note in the comments on facebook or youtube or tweet to us let us know what you thought of the comic we reviewed. Let us know what you think of our review. And uh, as always, join us again next Tuesday on Flea Market Fantasy.